Greetings and salutations my dearest friends, my name is Samantha and today is a little bit of a different video as you can tell my setup is a little bit different because it is a reading vlog, daily vlog, vlog, come with me to the library, I'm going to talk about my life and what I'm reading, vlog. <laughs> Are you welcome or welcome back to my channel as you can tell from the intro I don't really know the trajectory of this video and where it's going but I thought I would take you guys with me along my day I have not filmed in a while because my physical and mental health have not been that great but I miss filming with you guys I have a couple life updates gonna chat about some books that I'm reading and I really want to go to the library today so let's do it I'm gonna take you guys to the library with me, maybe the bookstore. I'm gonna chat with you guys as I get ready, uh, kind of tell you what books I've been reading and how my life has been recently. Um, yeah, this is honestly a little bit more of a chatty video because I've been going through a lot of personal things and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it nonetheless. Well, hello there. Greetings and salutations, my dearest friends. Um, let's do our makeup together. I'm gonna talk about some life updates. I'm trying to like, set this up where you can't see the mirror you know what i mean it's not really working oh god got some new makeup that i really want to play with and i have been feeling really sad recently and haven't really put much effort into doing my makeup or anything really so i think doing my makeup will make me happy so i'm gonna do it with you guys my phone just went off so the first thing that i'm trying is this dream canvas color correcting primer balm from this brand called myra cosmetics and it's like an orangey color that's supposed to color correct. So I use color corrector almost every day. Ooh, it's smooth. It's so smooth. I use color corrector pretty much every day because I have dark spots all over my face from like acne scars and stuff. So this primer really intrigued me. Like I said, I've just been really sad recently. Um, I'm having one of the biggest flare-ups um, of my endometriosis that I've had ever pretty much and it just feels like a continuous flare-up um like it's never ending um so my physical health kind of took a little bit of a decline and in result of that I feel like my mental health um took a decline I was feeling very down and very discouraged about my physical health and I just felt like there really was like no solution or relief for me so that was making me feel really sad like as I'm going through all of this I'm experiencing a lot of pain and discomfort but I still have to like the world keeps on moving I still have to go to work I still have to pay bills and that was just like stressing me out because I just wanted to really just focus on my physical and mental health and out of literally nowhere I got the most intense insomnia I've ever had um, let me grab a brush real quick. So I have always, ever since I was a kid, have had very vivid nightmares. They're like off and on. They're not like consistent nightmares. It would just happen like occasionally throughout my entire life. But recently my insomnia has gotten so bad. I was getting maybe two to four hours of sleep a night. And then I was waking up and having to go to a full eight hour shift. And my brain could not function. And through all of this insomnia, when I could fall asleep, I was having night terrors. There was a couple nights where I was waking up screaming at the top of my lungs, running down the hallway into, um, you know, my parents' bedroom or my siblings' bedroom. And I didn't even know that I was doing this until they were shaking me awake. And then when I was awake, I would just be so scared of something. Like I said, I've always had nightmares. Always. Um, I think I've talked about that a little bit on my channel before, but I'm not going to talk about it too much. It's, it was maybe a nightmare once a week or every other week, nothing too crazy or unmanageable. But then it became something that was happening every single night. No sleep, and I'm in this ex intense amount of pain because of my flare from endometriosis. So all of this was happening, I was making a lot of mistakes at work because I was just so tired and in so much pain, I felt like I couldn't focus. And once I started making mistakes at work, mistakes that could very well, you know, get me fired, I decided that I just needed to take a step back in general. So I requested to take 
personal leave from my job. Also, I was taking new medication during all of this time and my body was not reacting well to it. So I, my doctor recommended that I take some personal leave as well to allow my body time to acclimate to the medication. So yeah, that's what I did. I requested two weeks personal leave off of work so that I could go to several doctor's appointments um, that I wouldn't have been able to make because, you know, I work normal, like, office hours, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and that's, like, the time that doctor's appointments are. Um, so I, I just needed some time to step away to prioritize my physical health and my mental health and also go to, like, all of my doctor's appointments. That is what has been going on with me. I know that's a lot and there's honestly so much more but I just can't talk about it or I'm gonna start crying and I'm in the middle of doing my makeup so that will not end well. As of everything that was happening I got into a serious reading slump. I can't even remember the last time that I finished a book because my brain just cannot concentrate on one thing at a time it is super difficult for me to just sit down and read you guys know i have a book club a historical romance book club and i wasn't even able to read one of the books that was for the book club and i felt so guilty and like so sad because i was excited to read the book and um you know obviously when we do our live shows we talk about the book and i didn't have much to talk about but it was like i could not read anything which obviously Jessica who is my co-host was completely understanding and the other co-hosts that joined us that live show um had such wonderful things to say the show went fine but that's so unlike me to not read a single book for like a whole month but it's just because of my anxiety like I cannot focus on anything <sighs> that was a lot that was a lot but I did start reading something yesterday and I feel like it's helping me get off of my reading slump. So let me know if you guys do this. I do these things called like break in case of emergency where basically like I have authors and series that I know I'm going to love. I know I'm going to love them, but I save them for the moments where I'm feeling very down and need like a pick me up. Ooh, have the hiccups. Save them for the times where I'm feeling very down and need like a pick me up. So one of those series is by Sarah Simone. Sarah Simone writes one of my favorite series ever, the pre-series. I adore those books to pieces. I have a whole reading vlog on it. Um, and those books make me so emotional and I just cried the entire reading vlog. I read those books last time I was having like a mental breakdown, like a whole episode. I read those books and leaned into those books when I needed comfort. So I guess Sierra smells like a comfort read for me, which is very odd because her books are very steamy and a little taboo, but I don't know. They just do it for me. Anyways, I have been saving this book because I love Sarah Simone. And I also love love triangles and polyamorous relationships. And she has a series that has all of that. All of that. So I'm reading, um, I think it's called American Queen. I'll put it right here. Becca from Hello Lovely recommended this book to me ages ago, ages ago, when I was talking about like how much I loved polyamorous romances and she gifted me the ebook and I was just like saving it on my Kindle for this very moment. So I, when I was having like a reading slump, um, I was rereading some of my favorite books. I reread again The Magic again for like the seventh time. You guys know that's like my favorite book ever. Um, so I reread that book and then I picked up this book by Sarah Simone and it is, it is definitely helping with my reading slump. Let me tell you, I am loving it. Oh my god, I am loving it. Okay, so it's kind of like a modern day retelling of king arthur which and now like in hindsight i realize i know nothing about that mythology nothing about that story does it end well i feel like it doesn't i feel like that was not a romance i feel like that was not a happily ever after i don't know like king arthur and genevieve and is it genevieve genevieve what was her name and like lancelot like all of those people it's kind of like a retelling of that so our heroine she it starts okay 
book bounces back and forth between the past, the present, and like memories. So it's a really interesting story dynamic because the beginning of the book starts off with her getting married and the book actually starts and like gets you to how she got to the point of walking down the aisle. So our heroine, she is the daughter of like some politician. Either her grandfather was a president or a vice president or something. She is in a very like politically well-known family and she ends up meeting this soldier at a party and they have like this very intense moment, intense attraction to each other and they kiss but there's a huge age gap between them. Well, not huge. It's only 10 years. But when they meet, she's like 16 and he's like 26. So in that aspect, she's underage and it's a huge age gap. So because of their age differences, they kind of part ways. But there's such an intense attraction to each other that they really never forgot about one another. And then that guy turns out to be the president of the United States. Wow, scandalous. Also turns out to be like kind of a love triangle because she it also has like a very intense attraction and connection with his best friend who happens to be the vice president of the United States. And they all have this very intricate history that ties them together. So yeah, that's the book and it is so good. I don't want to talk about it like too much because I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. Oh my god, I need to blend this out. What the heck? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh gosh, something happened right here. This is the Wet n Wild stick bronzer. It's like three bucks and it's so good, but I've never used this color before. I normally use their cream blushes. I don't normally use their stick bronzers, so I forgot how pigmented they were. Just gonna blend this out. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna powder and it's gonna come together. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah. Love, love triangles, love taboo relationships. So the president of the United States, like, please. I love the scandal. I love the politics. I love the drama. Oh, Sierra Simone is so freaking good. Honestly, this is turning out to be like one of my favorite books already. It has everything that I want. Like literally, and I love how it like hops back and forth between the past and present. It's like kind of a second chance romance, a little bit. It is so good. Okay, this bronzer situation is not getting any better. So just forgive me for that. This new cream blush that I'm like so excited to try. I'm so, look at how cute it is already. It's a heart. It's supposed to be like a vlog of taking you guys to the library with me, but... I don't know. It turned very chatty. I'm very sorry. Anyways, so this is another blush from that brand Myra Cosmetics. And it's their Love Heat Cream Blush in the shade I Miss You. And it's a very pink. But I really like that. I love a bright pink blush. I think it looks so flattering. So let's just pop this on. I really need to finish getting ready. I feel like I've chatted for a really long time. So I'm going to finish getting ready. And maybe I'll take you guys to the library with me if I can get my life together. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. else has to say and therefore all you'll have to talk about is your own conversation the same is true for people who think all the time that means when i use the word think talking to yourself sub vocal conversation the constant uh, chit chat of symbols and images and talk and words inside your skull now if you do that all the time you'll find that you've nothing to think about except thinking. And just as you have to stop talking to hear what others have to say, you have to stop thinking to find out what life is about. And the moment you stop thinking, book buying day I was taking the kids to the mall because this little girl wanted to go shopping so we went on kind of like a sister date and there's a Barnes and Noble by here so I was like oh there is this copy of Dracula that I have just been salivating over for the longest time and I do not need another copy of Dracula I do not need another copy of Dracula like four what 
I don't know why. There's you two. Have, like a Phantom of the Opera. You have like five. Literally, that was just about what I was about to say. I was going to say, I have two obsessions, okay? That I will collect every copy of these two books. And it's a Dracula and Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. So... I think we're gonna run in here and get the Dracula because it's just been on my eye, on my noggin, and I cannot stop thinking about it. So let's go. I'm gonna show you guys real quick because I didn't plan on going to Barnes and Noble and I wrapped up this video. So I'm just gonna throw this clip in now. Barnes and Noble but let me show you what I got so of course we secured the bag with Dracula and I got this copy is it not so gorgeous the kids are happy and I love the black spray edges this is gonna look so gorgeous on my shelves when you have no I don't have this one I don't have this one no I have another version of Dracula that's black this one's red big big difference okay and then remember how I said um, that I don't know what King Arthur is and like I never read that story. Did I impulsively buy a King Arthur book? Yes. So now I want to read King Arthur, the story of King Arthur, because I'm reading the Sierra Simone book, which is a retelling. I know, I'm impulsive. But this one is so stinking pretty. It's like this purple book with uh, silver sprayed edges. I really needed it. Okay, that was it at Barnes & Noble. I actually really liked the layout of it. It was really nice. I don't go into the store often because books are expensive here and you know, a girl is broke. We have secured the bag. I am back home and I have quite a few books to show you. Oh gosh, I just dropped all of them. Into the library and this library is fantastic. It is like a four story library, just so beautiful and filled with books and really good choices. I've never been to this library before because it is a new building and it is ginormous. It's like four stories, but the parking is atrocious. There is like two parking spaces available. And if you know me, you know that I have a lot of anxiety when it comes to driving, particularly finding a place to park. So I just avoid the library because of that. But I was like, you know what? Today's like the middle of the week. I'm gonna go early in the morning and it's gonna be fine. And it was indeed fine. It's downstairs because they had like a Friends of a Library book sale, which is like a little bookstore that libraries sell books for discounted prices. And then I went to the bookstore that is like right around the corner from the library. So let me show you what I got because I'm just talking and chit chatting with you guys. I got three books at the Friends of the Library sale. So the first book I got was by Connie Mason. It's called Taken by You. I got a YA book and I know what you guys are thinking, Samantha, why would you get a YA book if you don't read YA? And that is a wonderful question and the only real answer is that it's sapphic. And I love sapphic books. Okay, I wanna read any sapphic book that is out there. I love sapphic books. I feel like they don't get enough attention. They're some of my favorite books to read. And like I saw this and it just looks so cute. So this is called Love and Other Natural Disasters. Then I saw this one and it's a sapphic romance with fake dating. That's all I needed to know, okay? And it was only like $4, so I had to get it. I had to get it. Something that I got is Payback's a Witch by Lana Harper. This has been on my TBR for quite literally ages, ever since it came out. I think I had an arc of this like once upon a time on my Kindle. Never got around to it, so I'm happy to have a physical copy. I feel like this will make me read it. Maybe? It was only $4, so I picked it up. It's like a little section that was like a free section, and I picked these two books up. So this one is by Jude Devro, and it's called Legend. Looks like that. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Devro? DeVoe? How do you pronounce her last name? Tell me in the comments. And then I also got this book by Katherine Sutcliffe. It's called Miracle, and I just honestly picked it up because of the step back and it was free so that is a really pretty cover. I went to a bookstore right around the corner and I picked up a handful of books. So I picked up another Connie Mason book. This one is called A Knight's Honor. I don't know why. Whenever I see Connie Mason books now I just have to grab them. I can't explain it. And then I picked up four Lorraine Heath books and I had to limit myself okay. There was like 10 
Lauren Heath books that I didn't grab and I was like Ugh, but I want them. I don't own many of her books. I only own like two or three and I'm trying to get through her backlist because I know that she's like a staple historical romance author. I've read some of her books and given them like one star, two star, and then I've given other, um, and then I've some of her other books I've given like five stars. They're my like holy grail, absolutely love them type of books. So I'm like, she's one of those authors. Well, I can't like no one is falling into bed with a duke and I, I grabbed it also because of the step back is beauty tempts the beast super cute i think these are all part of her sins for all seasons series next one is the duchess in her bed and then last is when a duke loves a woman do i have this one? Oh god i think i actually have this one now that i'm looking at the cover hold on my books are organized alphabetically, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, 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 H. Ah, oh, I do have this one. Okay, I do have this one, and I totally forgot I had it. Dang it. Dang it. Okay, I'm going to probably, like, gift this to a friend, or I'll put it in, like, my free little library that's by my house. Okay, so those are the books that I got, and, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed spending the day with me. I know I'm a little bit of an emotional wreck, but this was really just me getting back into the vibe of filming. So if you like these more casual videos where I chat about life, the books I'm reading, and take you guys with me along my day, give this video a thumbs up and let me know if you want to see some more. I hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. It means the absolute world to me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!